Hallelujah. Good morning. I hope that you're safe. The Lord has kept you safe and sound. There's no greater joy than being in the Lord. And uh, we keep that relationship by studying the word of God, by drawing closer to him and knowing what he wants in our lives for us to do, how to live. And that's what we do here. We study the Bible. We aim to study from Genesis to Revelation and by God's grace. We've done nine books of the Bible. This week we shall complete the tenth book, which is Second Samuel that we are handling today. If you've not listened to all these podcasts that we've done, I ask you to please download them. Go and uh, check our up Bible In Depth Network. You'll find all podcasts and you'll be able to study the Word of God. Thank you for taking time to study. Remember, there's no limitation to revelation. God reveals His Word to everybody that shows the need. Everyone that comes out, God will reveal his word to you. Now we've done 18 chapters of Second Samuel. Today I want us to continue with chapter 19. I'll be using the New King James Version. You can also use whichever version that you have. Second Samuel 19. And Job was told, Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. Remember, Absalom has been killed in battle. The man who wanted to overthrow his father has actually been overthrown. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people because they know that the king is weeping. For the people heard it and said that day, the king is grieved for his son. Yeah, He's lost his son. Yes, he was coming and looking and seeking for his life as David, but that didn't remove the fact that he was his son, so he was in sorrow for this. And the people stole back into the city that day, as people who are ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. The events that have come up, the events that have happened, the death of the son, are not those that give lots of joy to the king, so the people will f- get the emotion and feeling of their king. Yeah, But the king covered his face, and the king cried out with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son, is in deep sorrow about this. Then Job came into the house to the king and said, Today you have disgraced all your servants who today have saved your life the lives of your sons and daughters, the lives of your wives and the lives of your concubines, in that you love your enemies and hate your friends. Joab is a very robust man. He's a man who always comes out in great measure. Yeah, Sometimes he's too extreme. Now, in this case, he's not having mercy with David at all. He's saying, we have risked our lives for you and for you busy crying over the enemy. Your son Absalom was the enemy. He wanted your life. And now you're showing that you love your enemies and you're hating your friends. Yeah, that's what it's telling him. And uh, we have that mention in the Bible about us loving our enemies. Those that consider you an enemy because generally you shouldn't consider them one. But those that create that fold of enemy. Hmm? that you love them. It doesn't matter what they've done, but you love them. Now, Absalom, though he's the son of David, has created an enmity between his, himself and the father. But the death of Absalom does not bring joy to David. Even if the son has decided to bring this enmity, for him he loves him. Yeah, you love your enemies. But Absalom, uh, Joab is saying, why can you do such a thing? Yeah, For you have declared today that you regard neither princes nor servants. For today I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all of us had died today, then it would have pleased you well. Job is not happy. He's saying, I think you even would have been happy when we are dead, but your son is alive. Now therefore arise, go out and speak comfort to your servants. For I swear by the Lord, if you do not go out, not one will stay with you this night and that we and that will be worse for you than all the evil that has befallen you from your youth until now he's saying if you do not go out comfort the people whom you have made sad 
yet they've gone out to fight for you. You're going to have such sorrow because we are going to leave. Everyone is going to leave you alone here. Yeah? There's a moment of truth here coming for David. Sponsored proudly by Joab. Then the king arose and sat in the gate. And they told all the people saying, There is the king sitting in the gate. So all the people came before David. And every one of Israel had fled to his tent. For every one of Israel had fled to his tent. So they come to him. Now the people were in a dispute throughout all the tribes of Israel saying, The king saved us from the hand of our enemies. He delivered us from the hand of the Philistines. And now he has fled from the land because of Absalom. Yeah. What had gone out? People are wondering, how can a man who has fought all these battles, the one that we used to sing for that he has killed tens of thousands, how come he's fleeing from a man called Absalom? His son. But Absalom, whom we anointed over us, has died in battle. Now, therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing back the king? Hmm? They're saying, yes, we anointed him king over us, but he's dead. So why doesn't the king come back? So King David sent to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house? Since the words of all Israel have come to the king to this very house, he's wondering, I've heard from all the other tribes of Israel, how about you, Judah? Why aren't you calling me back? Why aren't you talking about my return? You are my brethren. You are my bone and my flesh. Why then are you the last to bring back the king? He's saying, you my own. You know, sometimes those who are closest to you may not see the potential in you. Those who are closest to you may even ignore you and reject you. But that does not remove the fact that God has blessed you. Sometimes they do not see the value in you, which is being seen by the other people. In this case, Judah is not seeing the value in their own f- born and flesh, David, which all the rest of the tribes of Israel are seeing and saying, come back our king. And that happens in life where people are not looking at those close to them, those who are part of their lives. You've grown together and they do not seem to see the value in you. But that should not break you down because God has placed value. In you, it is not determined by men. Yeah, it is already determined by God. So, he's wondering why my own people of Judah are not coming out. Yeah, and he's saying, and say to Amasa, Are you not my bone and my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if you are not commander of the army before me continually. In place of Joab. I think the events that have happened and what Joab has spoken and given even the past of Joab and the things he has kept doing. David feels now this is the time to get another commander. And he says let it be Amasa. Yeah. To be in place of Joab. He's replacing Joab as the commander. Yeah. So he swayed the hearts of all men of Judah just as the heart of one man so that they sent this word to the king return you and all your servants first of all because Amasa has been appointed and because a word has also come out to them from the king wondering why they are not coming to his rescue he's telling them that you're not calling me back now after all these events they say return return and be king then the king returned and came to the Jordan And Judah came to Gilgal to go meet the king, to escort the king across the Jordan. And Shimei, the son of Jerah, a Benjamite, who was from Bahurim, hurried and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. Remember Shimei, the one who was cursing David while he was running from Jerusalem, from Absalom. Now he's coming down with his men. There were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him, and they went over the Jordan before the king. Now, they are all going to welcome the king, 
bring him back. Yeah? Then a ferry boat went across to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. Now Shimei, the son of Jera, fell down before the king when he had crossed the Jordan. Remember, this man had done wrong. Yeah? He threw stones at the king, cursed him, spoke all sorts of words. Now he's bowing down before him. There's a day that comes when those that were mocking you, those who are laughing at you, those who are cursing, those who are speaking negatively about you, come down. You get a moment where they come down. And in this case, irrespective of what Shimei did and said, he bows down. Because that moment always comes. And we shouldn't be under any sort of pressure. Yeah? Just leave it to God. God will know how to deal. You've been shamed. There's a moment that will come and those who shamed you will come down. You've been accused. There's a moment that comes, a moment of truth, where those who accused you will come down. Just like Shimei does, bows down to David. Yeah? Then he said to the king, Do not let my lord impute iniquity to me. Or remember what wrong your servant did on the day that my lord the king left Jerusalem. That the king should take it to heart. He's asking, he's apologizing, he's asking for mercy before the king. He's saying, I am sorry. For I know, for I your servant know I have sinned. Therefore, here I am the first to come today to the house of today of all the house of Joseph, to go down to meet my lord, the king. Yeah? He's asking for forgiveness for what he did. That day always comes. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It could be in your family. It could be in your workplace. It could be in your community, wherever it is. The day always comes when you're vindicated. And people come and ask and plead for forgiveness. For what was said and done to you. This is what happens to David here. So he's coming bowing down Shimei. Yeah? But Abishai, the son of Zeruah, answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this? Because he cast the Lord's anointed. These men are always bitter. Remember, Abishai is the brother of Joab. They are bitter men for them. They want blood. You did wrong, pay for it. Yeah? People who always... Ensure that you pay for your, for your sin. They have no forgiveness in them. He says to him, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruah, that you should be adversaries to me today? Shall any man be put to death today in Israel? For I do not know that today, for do I not know that today I am king over Israel? Hmm? Saying, why do you always want blood? Abishai, why do you always want to kill, just like your brother Joab? Yeah, for you, you are always looking to kill. Therefore, the king said to Shimei, you shall not die. And the king swore to him. Now Shimei has been forgiven. The king has spared his life. That is what happens. For those who wronged you, you forgive. You do not repay evil for evil. You forgive. Those who hurt you, you forgive. Yes, it's not easy. And I know that. But it's important for you to always forgive those that have wronged you, those who have hurt you. It's important that you come out and forgive them. Forgiveness is what happens this day between Shimei and David. Now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. People are coming down to meet him. All those who had left him are coming. Yeah, And he had not cared for his feet, nor trimmed his moustache, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he returned. In peace, yeah? So it was when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? Saying, Why did you leave me? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I'll saddle a donkey for myself that I may ride on it and go to the king because your servant is lame. And he has slandered your servant to my lord the king, but my lord the king is like an angel of God. Therefore, do what is good in your eyes. Now, Mephibosheth is saying, Ziba lied. Yeah? 
that servant lied about me that I have gone to take kingship uh, after your departure from Jerusalem that the house of Saul is going back to claim. Now we don't know who is lying or is t- telling the truth whether it was a servant or Mephibosheth. But he's coming back as as per what we read. And he says for all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet you set your servant among those to eat at your own table. Therefore, what right have I still to cry out any more to the king? Yeah? You've given me all the pleasures. Why should I be seeking your throne? So the king said to him, Why do you speak any more of your matters? I have said, You and Ziba divide the land. So he now says, I had given the land to Ziba, but now you divide it. Yeah. Then Mephibosheth said to the king, Rather let him take it all, inasmuch as my lord the king has come back in peace to his own house. Mephibosheth is saying, I don't need the land. Let Ziba take it. Now, there's a conflict between these two. We don't know who is speaking the truth and who is lying. But that one ends there. They're told, divide the land, but Mephibosheth offers to let it go. It's like he go, he gets angry with Ziba to the level that I don't even want anything. You take the land. For me, I'm happy my king is back. I'll still sit at his table. Yeah, And... Basilia the Gileadout came down from Rogelim and went across the Jordan with the king to escort him across the Jordan. Now Basilia was a very aged man, 80 years old, and he had provided the king with supplies while he stayed at Mahanaim, for he was a very rich man. And the king said to Basilia, Come across with me, and I'll provide for you while you are with me in Jerusalem. Now, these are men who went and helped David when he was running across the Jordan. But Basilia said to the king, How long have I to live that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am today 80 years old. Can I discern between the good and bad? Can your servant test what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any longer the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be a father burden to my lord the king? Your servant will go a little way across the Jordan with the king. And why should the king repay me with such a reward? Please let your servant turn back again that I may die in my own city near the grave of my father and mother. But here is your servant, Chimham. is giving him Chimham. Let him cross over with the Lord, my king, and do for him what seems good to you. And the king answered, Chimham shall cross over with me, and I will do for him what he seems good to you. Now whatever you request of me, I would do for you. David always remembers the people who have helped him. Yeah? And he rewards them. That's key. Remember those that have helped you in times of trouble. When your days get better, don't forget them. Go out and reward them. Do something for them. Not that they did it for a reward, but always remember the people that help you along the way. Yeah? Then all the people went over the Jordan. And when the king had crossed over, the king kissed Basilia and blessed him and returned to his own place. Now the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him, and all the people of Judah escorted the king, and also half the people of Israel. Just then all the men of Israel came to the king and said to the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen you away and brought the king, his household, and all David's men with him across the Judah? There is a war here coming. Yeah. The entire Israel, the other t- 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 tribes of Israel are are wondering why is it that Judah has stolen the show? Yeah. So all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, because the king is a close relative of ours, why then are you angry over this matter? Have we ever eaten at the king's expense? Or has he ever given us any gift? So it's an issue of favor now. They're saying Judah is taking over the procession, the return of the king. They are in charge of all events, but Judah is also saying he's our own blood. And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten shares in the king, therefore we also have more right to David than you. Yeah, we are more than you. We all have rights to the king. Why then do you despise us? Yeah? Were we not the first to advise bringing back our king? You guys were up there in your beds. Weren't we the ones who said that the king should come back? You came later, but you're stealing the show. Yet the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Judah is intent. They are leading this delegation. 
So the Uko crook, they are saying we are the ones in charge, not you. It looks like a petty war that's going on there between these two groups, but to them probably it made sense, yeah? I mean, it's just sending back the king. You shouldn't have so much issue with it on who brought the king. But anyway, Judah is winning in that. They're saying, it's our blood, we shall take him. You guys just follow. Chapter 20. And there happened to be there a rebel whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no share in David, nor do we have inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. Now a rebel has come out. It looks like it's a, a march of joy. And just as they are marching into their joy, taking the king back to Jerusalem, they hear there is a new rebel. There is one who wants the throne. His name is Sheba. For him, he says they don't want anything to do with David. They are not interested in him. Now, this man must have been mighty. yeah. So every man of Israel deserted David and followed Sheba, the son of Bichri. How quick people are to change posts. They have been coming, singing, rejoicing with David. And when they hear a voice of war, a voice of rebellion, they say, ah, let's rush to Sheba. Let's go on his side because we cannot be with David anymore. They are not loyal. They do not remain. They are those people in life that do not stick with others. They shift goalposts here and there. They are always moving. They are not always determined to stick with you. There is no loyalty with them. Whatever comes sways them. Everything that comes takes them away. Just like these men of Israel, just by Sheba speaking, they don't know Sheba. They don't know his intentions. But immediately, they are rushing and switching to his side. But the men of Judah, from the Jordan as far as Jerusalem, remained loyal to their king. Now, there is a way God works. And he does things intentionally. That God caused the men of Judah to stick with David. And even after the small petty war that the other Israelite tribes had with Judah, Judah insisted to remain with their king is what helps him here. Because now the other men of Israel run off to Sheba, but the men of Judah remain loyal to their king. Yeah? God always provides for you those that are going to help you in the time of trouble. And God had provided these men of Judah to help David. Now David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house and put them in seclusion and supported them, but did not go into them. This, remember, these ten women were sexually abused by Absalom in the presence of all Israel. So when he comes back, these wives, concubines of David, he does not have any more affairs with them. He sets them aside, gives them their own house, tells them to stay there. So they were shut up to the day of their death, living in widowhood. They lived there because of course after what had happened with Absalom and what he messed up with them that evil did David could not stay with them anymore and the king said to Amasa assemble men the men of Judah for me within three days and be present here yourself remember Amasa is the new commander as, as far as David is concerned by the way he's the one is choosing over Joab so Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah but he delayed longer than the set time which David had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now Sheba the son of Bichri will do us more harm than Absalom. I think this man Sheba was determined. Yeah, His rebellion was taking shape. And Amasa is not coming back. He's taking his time. David tells Abishai, Sort this out. He's not even telling Joab anymore. Yeah, I think the issue they had, that conversation brought a lot of anger. That now the king is speaking to the brother instead of Joab. Saying, Amasa is taking long, Joab does not listen to me. Now, Abishai, we need to sort out this man Sheba. Yeah? Take your Lord's servants and pursue him lest he find for himself fortified cities and escape us. Yeah? If he gets a city, it will be hard to beat him. So, Joab's men 
with the Cheritites, the Pelehites, and the mighty men went out after him. And they went out of Jerusalem to pursue Sheba, the son of Bichri. When they were at the large stone, which is in Gibeon, Amasa came before them. Now Joab was dressed in a battle armor. On it was a belt with a sword fastened in its sheath at his hips. And he was going forward. It fell out. Then Joab said to Amasa, Are you in health, my brother? Hmm? This is a man who is taking over his place. And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. But Amasa did not notice that the sword that was in Joab's hand. And he struck him with it in the stomach, and his entrails poured out on the ground, and he did not strike him again. Thus he died. Then Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued Sheba, the son of Bichu. Now, Joab has eliminated all opposition. The one who wanted to take his position of commander, he has killed. So Amasa is down. Meanwhile, one of Joab's men stood near Amasa and said, Whoever favors Joab and whoever is for David, follow Joab. Yeah, Amasa shall not be our leader, no. But Amasa wallowed in his blood in the middle of the highway. And when the man saw all the people stood still, he moved Amasa from the highway to the field and threw a garment over him when he saw that everyone who came upon him halted. When he was removed from the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue Sheba, the son of Bichri. Now Amasa is finished. There's no longer any opposition for Joab. Joab is doing all things to keep his place. And he went through the, all the tribes of Israel to Abel and Beth Macha and all the Berites, so that they were gathered together and also went after Sheba. They are going after this rebel. Then they came and besieged him at Abel of Beth Macha, and they cast up a siege mound against the city, and he stood by the rampart. And all the people who were with Joab battled to the wall to throw it down. Then a wise woman cried out from the city, Hear, hear, please say to Joab, come nearby that I may speak with you. Yeah, there is a woman who is wise in this city. Yeah, there were women of power in the Bible. When he had had, when he had come near to her, the woman said, Are you Joab? He answered, I am. Then she said to him, Hear the words of your maidservant. And he answered, I am listening. So she spoke, saying, They used to talk in former times, saying, They shall surely seek guidance at Abel. And so they would end disputes. I am among the peaceable and faithful in Israel. You seek to destroy a city and a mother. In Israel, why would you swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? This, this city that you've come to is blessed. It has a good report over it. They've already said good things about that there is peace here. We settle our conflicts. And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. Yeah, That is not so. But a man from the mountains of Ephraim, Sheba the son of Bichri by name, has raised his hands against the king, against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. So the woman said to Joab, watch, his head will be thrown to you over the wall. So the woman is saying, we don't want a war here. We are people of peace. We want peace and we're going to sort this in a peaceful manner. This is a city of peace. It has a history. It has a testimony over it. So he's saying, I'm going to bring you his head, but we don't want war here. Then the woman in her wisdom went to all the people. And they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and threw it out to Joab. Just like that, the rebellion is finished. Just like that, the rebel has been killed. Then he blew a trumpet, and they withdrew from the city every man to his tent. So Joab returned to the king at Jerusalem. So the rebel has been sorted. David is taking back his reins. Peace seems to be returning to him. Absalom is dead. The rebel, Sheba, is also dead. And Job was over all the armies of Israel. He retained his place. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cheritites and Pelitites. Adoram was in charge of revenue. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was recorder. Shiva was scribe. Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. And Ira, the Jarite, was the chief minister under David. May we pray. Father, 
We thank you for your word today. Thank you for revealing your word to us. And we pray that you keep speaking to us and showing us the direction. We love you. And we ask for your blessing in all the things that we do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.